Hello there, this is Welsh ASMR 82. Hey, how you doing? And in today's ASMR football or ASMR soccer video, I'm going to look at results from as many different nations around the world as I can as well as briefly talk about the African Cup of Nations final and the Asian Cup final. We'll start with those, and then we'll look at the Premier League straight after. As I've been going on about for ages, I have just moved house. So I'm a little bit freaked out because the mic is now on this side. And I had to change my setup a little bit. So I really, really hope I've done some sound tests, sound checks. I hope that the audio is as good as usual. If it is, then give this video a like for me, please. Also, the more observant amongst you will have noticed I've got a different stylus. I put a thicker, um, what's it called, screen protector on my phone. And the good old one was having issues, if you remember. Yeah, it's very slow, look. And sometimes it doesn't click, and sometimes it does click on stuff. So, when I was moving house, I'll stop talking about it soon, I swear. I found this in the cupboard, and I thought, oh, I'll give that a go, and it seems to work a bit better. We'll see. So, I know that some of you really like to have the same thing every week. And for those of you playing the additional game of What is the Book? I put a new book here for you as well, so have fun trying to find out what that is. Okay, should we get started then? African Cup of Nations. What a tournament. Spectacular. So, loads of shocks. I talked about this in the previous video. Congratulations to um, South Africa, who came third, got the bronze medal, with a, with a team about 90% made up of home not just homegrown players, but home-playing players, players from their own league. Unlike many nations in Africa, they don't really um, get bought up by European clubs that often. So, Roman Williams was one of the players of the tournament. I think he got the Golden Glove as well. His heroics in that... Oh, I don't want to go to bed. Oh, maybe this isn't as good as I thought. He saved... Oh, no, it was in the semi-final. No. Maybe the quarter-final. He saved loads of penalties. Had a sensational tournament. Well done to him, and well done to South Africa. Commiserations, but still well done to uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, who had a sensational tournament as well. And then on to the final, we had... Probably, the, well, yeah, I would say the two best teams left in the competition with the early exits of so many big names like Morocco, Tunisia, Senegal, Egypt, Algeria, all of them going out either in the um, group stage or the first knockout. So those teams left, I think, the home nation, Ivory Coast, and Nigeria were the best ones. And to be honest, on the day, I thought Nigeria would win, but on the day... They just didn't get going. The header um, by one of the best players in the tournament, Troste Kong, had um, come against the run of play, and Ivory Coast just um, I played them really from start to finish. We'll just look at the stats, see if it shows. Oh, that is a little bit unpredictable still. Maybe I'll just revert to using my finger. Yeah, look, 62% possession, 38 1.5 expected goals, 0.29. So Nigeria didn't have a good game. They didn't really get going. However, Adingra of um, Brighton and Hove Albion had a sensational game set at the second goal, which was an absolute gorgeous goal by um, Sebastian Ali, who has declared his um, Ivory Coast citizenship. He used to be considered to be a French international. And of course, for him, it's a fantastic story because of his overcoming cancer 
and coming back into the game to score the winner. Beautiful goal. Check it out online. Real striker's goal. Don't know how he got his foot in that position. Um, striker's instinct um, to get the goal that wins the tournament for the home nation in front of their home fans. You know, what a moment for him. So congratulations personally to him, but also to the whole team Ivory Coast who, let's not forget, sacked their manager after coming third in their group and being beaten 4-0 by Equatorial Guinea in the final game. And they made it through as one of the of the the worst of the four best third place. So they, they really shouldn't have got through. Similar story back in um, the European Championships when Portugal won it. Portugal had three draws in the group, if you remember, where they filmed, they went and filmed Ronaldo walking through a park in France that summer. Um, and he, like, had an argument with the um, camera crew and, like, threw one of their cameras in the lake or something because he just couldn't inspire Portugal to win. And then they ended up getting out of the group as one of the best third place players uh, teams and won the tournament so yeah it can happen and i think overall they probably were the best team because not just because they won their matches but they grew in the tournament and another happy story about it was the manager story so they sacked their manager the european manager and put in place um Faye, who emers um, Emerson Faye, and he had his career. He's only forty. He had to give up early. He was Reading's most expensive player ever. I think they bought him when they had that um, one um, damning, I suppose you could say, Premier League season where they couldn't win. And he um, had to give up playing really early, two thousand and twelve. Um, playing for Nice, he had a very bad injury, fantastic player, and yeah, he, I think, you know, not just Ali, but also his redemption as well for having to retire early through injury, so well done to Ivory Coast. So let's talk about the Asian Cup, I've long loved Asian football, um, and I, I'll tell you that the Asian Cup actually for me was way more entertaining than the African Cup of Nations, despite the African Cup of Nations having arguably a better calibre of players on the pitch um, from better leagues around the world. I was extremely pleasantly surprised about the Asian Cup. So many good teams, even the smaller teams having such good technique, playing really well. Some absolute shocks in this tournament as well. One of the major ones being Jordan, making it all the way to the final. They'd never been past a quarter final before. Most of their players just play in Jordan. They don't have any foreign um, players playing in any of the big leagues, really. Um, and they made it all the way to the final. And to be honest, on the day, we're a little bit unlucky. Some of the refereeing decisions were 50-50. And again, the home team, Qatar, won the tournament. They didn't blow away any team. They only beat Palestine 2-1 in the round of 16. It was big stun on penalties. It was down to the last penalty. Um, then they beat Iran late on, 3-2. Um, and then they won in the final 3-1. But like I say, it was three penalties, all taken by the very impressive Afif. He plays for Assad um, in Qatar extremely pacey winger um, sort of roams around the pitch excellent player really enjoyed watching him every single game he was the best player of the tournament he was the highest scorer of the tournament he had the most assists or most assists plus goals he had an absolutely sensational tournament um, Akram Afif uh, really good player and uh, I, I'm quite happy for him despite the fact I, I really fancy Jordan to win it for their first time ever but Qatar now have won it back to back. So they, I think they're the fourth Asian team to have done that, along with Japan, Iran, and I think it's Saudi Arabia. So Qatar has done that as well. The funny thing about the Asian Cup is that many of you probably assume that Japan, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, 
um, Iran win it every time, and that's completely not the case. They have the most historical wins, but um, in actual fact, they haven't won it in quite some time. The last few winners have been um, Qatar twice. Um, we've had Iraq win it as well, which was a complete shot out of the blue. Um, they were com they were com absolute underdog when they won it. So yeah. So I absolutely loved watching the Asian Cup. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and yeah, really good football on display. Korea played terribly under Klinsmann. Incidentally, for those of you who are interested in how that's going, um, they should never have got to the semi-final. They were terrible against Jordan. They didn't even have a shot on target. They narrowly, well, they shouldn't have beaten either Saudi Arabia, who they scored in the 99th minute to get an equaliser and then won on penalties. Shouldn't have beaten Australia, but again, 96th minute, 104th minute winner. Free kick from Son. Shouldn't have beat Australia, and then they sort of had their comeuppance. So, um, Saudi? No. South Korean press calling, calling the team said they played like zombies. Clinton, of course, already in big trouble because he took the job to be the coach of South Korea and decided not to move to Korea and to do it from the USA. So they weren't happy, the fans weren't happy about that. Um, the things to remember about Asian football is the the fan base is absolutely massive and not of necessarily the countries that you would expect. Yes, football is extremely popular in places like um, Australia, Korea, Japan, Iran, but even more so in emerging countries like Indonesia, India, where they have literally hundreds of millions of, of people who are interested in the games. So there's a, a, such a massive, massive potential fan base in Asia. Okay, let's go to our regular viewing then, shall we? Um, we'll just pop in on the Women's Champion League to begin with because we've had a couple of games. Six um, in each. We've got Barcelona top, Benfica second, Lyon and Bran of Norway, who've made it through. Paris Saint-Germain and Ajax by Munich have missed out, as have Roma. And lastly, Chelsea and Hecken. How curious that Paris FC and Paris Saint-Germain are both in the Champions League. Real Madrid, Femenino, bottom. So the knockout fixtures are going to be Bran against Barcelona, Ajax versus Chelsea, Hecken against Paris Saint-Germain and Benfica against Lyon. And those matches will be played next month, towards the end of March. Okay, um, I'll do a separate video when we've had the first round of the Champions League and Europa League Conference League matches separately. Premier League, what a season. Um, Man City ploughing <laughs> through... Everyone at the minute, scary. Arsenal, trying to keep up. Liverpool, looking over their shoulder. Tottenham, quietly, quietly creeping behind the others, uh, just in case, as are Aston Villa, who defiantly say that despite their bad form at the moment, can still finish top four. And I definitely think they can. They're only currently one point away. Man United having a much better start to the year than they had um, between August and Christmas. Newcastle as well. West Ham, lots of uncertainty at the minute in West Ham. Poor performances, um, but also Moyes hasn't signed a new contract and it's up in the summer. So uncertainty over the future. Is he going to be sacked because of the results? Is he going to leave in the summer because he hasn't signed a new contract? Is he going to stay? And I think that's affecting players on the pitch. Brighton, Chelsea and Wolves then. And down the bottom, Everton in the playoff, I'm sorry, the relegation spots with Burnley and Sheffield United, both of those in trouble of having a really almost record low points total. Let's have a look at results then. 
So Saturday, uh, Man City brushing aside Everton with two goals from a, a returning Haaland. Uh, Fulham beating Bournemouth 3-1. Two goals from Muniz, which is really good for his confidence, Rodrigo Muniz. I think he's just come back from injury as well. Uh, Liverpool beating Burnley 3-1. A goal for all of the front three there. Ah, and as I said that big spiel about Sheffield United, they did actually win against Luton away. Archer, Makati with a penalty and D'Souza Costa. And then Spurs. They beat Brighton 2-1 with a late, late, late goal from the Welshman Brennan Johnson, who I read, um, so I watched the highlights and a lot of the comments underneath on the Sky Sports football channel were saying about how people think that uh, Johnson's having a really bad season, he's not playing well, there's a bit of a waste of money. Other people are saying he's not the finished article. I'd like to hear your opinion if you want to drop a comment. Personally, I think he's actually playing, if anything, a tiny bit better than he did at Nottingham. Um, he's getting regular game time, game time, which I was kind of shocked at. I thought he'd be a substitute, but obviously there have been a lot of injuries as well. And um, and they got rid of Perisic in the January window too. Um, and I think they've got some long-term injuries in terms of some of their Solomon, I think, is out for a long time squad. So in terms of wide players, Son went to the Asian Cup. Timo Werner, I'm still not convinced on him. Richarlison, having a fantastic season, second half of the season. Solomon is out for a while. Um, so it says a few days. He might be back soon. Be He's been out since October. Uh, Kulusevsky's now playing in the middle. Gil still isn't a finished article. And Scarlett has had very limited game time. None None at all, I don't think. Bench, bench, one minute, seven minutes. Oh yeah, very limited. So I think Brennan's doing okay. Three goals, four assists in 21 matches. A rating by um, viewers of the Foot Mob app of 7.04. And to be honest, I think when his confidence comes, I'm expecting him to step up next season, particularly if they're in Europe. Um, I'm quite pleased with how he's doing, frankly. Um... So I'm really interested to find out from Spurs fans if you disagree with me. Okay, Brentford then beat Wolves. Another goal for uh, Tony, who's being chased by everyone under the sun for his goal record. Um, and then Nottingham Forest losing to Newcastle. Two goals from Guimarães, who they, if rumours have it, are struggling to keep for next season, particularly if they don't make European competition. Everyone's after him, apparently, including big names like Barcelona and then this result obviously 6-0 Arsenal away to West Ham so um, another goal for Trossa and Rice scoring against his whole team as well but he didn't celebrate so that's um, didn't rub salt in the wound and Man United beating Aston Villa Hoyland with another goal and McTominay popping up at the end with his never say die attitude the fact that there was even conversations about him leaving in January really horrified me. I can't imagine um, that being a good decision at all. He's won them so many matches. And then lastly, Chelsea beating Crystal Palace. Two goals from Gallagher, who again was also rumoured to leave. I think um, there was a in the press they were talking about maybe Spurs taking him on. Equally with their league position, people speculating over Enzo Fernandez uh, leaving. Apparently, uh, was it Bayern Munich tried to get on Mudrik on loan as well, but they said no. So uh, yeah, it was complete domination, and I know that um, Roy Hodgson is having a terrible time at the minute of Crystal Palace. They've lost the fans; they're not happy. They used to be 
extremely difficult to beat at home. I always used to say that on these videos, oh, you know, anyone would lose at Crystal Palace, but that's not the case at the moment, and they're sliding very quickly. Where are they in the table exactly? Yeah, they're 15. They are only five points away from relegation now. Um, and I think Olise has been targeted by Man United, according to the gossip columns, to leave as well, and he's obviously their best player. Okay, Championship, Leicester top. Leeds, going big guns, obviously beat my Swansea City, hammered them this week, midweek. Um, Southampton, another team that's hammered Swansea, uh, Ipswich, who we have on Saturday, so I think they will also heavily beat us. West Brom, Coventry, and then so many in the chasing pack, Norwich, Hull, Preston, Sunderland, Bristol, um, are all in with a shout, maybe even Watford and Middlesbrough might be looking up. Cardiff season sort of fiddle, fizzled out. Ramsey's back um, from injury, which is great, um, but then they've lost the last two matches and there's still speculation about them losing their manager. Um, he doesn't sound like he wants to go, but there's a lot of speculation there from somewhere. Where's that coming from? It's unsettling people, I think. And then Swansea uh, really struggling at the minute, conceding too many goals. Although he did actually get a shock win against Hull, who really shouldn't be losing to us, to be honest. Um, so they were quite surprised by that. Um, and then QPR Sheffield Wednesday and Rotherham down the bottom. So um, let's have a look at the weekend's results. Friday, Sheffield Wednesday beat Birmingham 2-0. Ipswich could only draw with West Brom, both obviously in the um, promotion picture. Blackburn beating Stoke 3-1. Cardiff had that lost, like I said, against Preston at home. Jacobson and Whiteman, or Jacobson, um, Swansea, mad, like somehow beating Hull, was the, yeah, we didn't have as good possession, um, and then Leeds, in their first of their two really big victories in the last seven days, 3-0, um, I read a stat, and uh, it's very good for the Welsh team, that since they've been playing Ampadu at centre-back alongside Roden, um, they've conceded one goal, and I think that's gone into something like five or six games now. So it might be something that the Welsh team can actually do in their playoff against Finland next month, uh, because I don't think Chris Meppham is playing, and Ben Davis definitely isn't playing. So, yeah, you could, I think we need to start doing that as a national team, actually putting together players that are playing regularly. Leeds is Wales United at the moment, so I really hope they are promoted. You have just got Connor Roberts as well, another Swansea boy. There were more Swansea-born players on Leeds' team when we played them this week than they were in Swansea. Uh, Bristol, 2-1 winners against Middlesbrough, and they're having a little bit of a good time at the second. QBR Norwich 2 all. Um, Sergeant the American getting a goal there. Southampton, another five goals. They seem to just be able to score as many as they want to at the minute, except against Bristol. We'll look at that in a second. 5-3 against Huddersfield. Uh, Sunderland, 3-1 against Plymouth and Watford, losing at home to champion, should we say champions-elect? Apparently the manager of Leicester said it's not a done deal that they're going to be promoted, but I think that's just trying to keep his players focused because they are very clearly going to get promoted. And bounce back straight away. Coventry beating Millwall 2-1. And then Birmingham actually getting a win. 1-0 uh, winners against Blackburn. Leicester beating Sheffield Wednesday, this time 2-0, with a goal from who else but Jamie Vardy. Norwich winning against Not uh, Watford. Four goals, another goal for Sargent as well. Hull beating Rotherham 2-1. Late goal from Ohio. Cool name. That result there. Two goals from Gnonto, Nyonto, Somerville and our ex-player Piro, Piroe. And 
Bristol City beating Southampton, which was a bit of a shock. But Bristol going well at the minute. Three goals to one. And West Brom beating Cardiff 2-0. Cardiff just can't seem to put the ball into the back of the net at the minute. And then Huddersfield beating Sunderland. So Sunderland having a bit of a rubbish week. PSM with a goal. Plymouth, Coventry, 2 all. Preston beating Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough also having a mini slide. Stoke beating QPR there 1-0. We'll go from Fauter Bircher. And Ipswich hammering Mill all away. Goal for the Welshman Broadhead. Another one for the other Welshman Moore. Seems to be Leeds and Ipswich have most of the Welsh team at the moment. So you've also got um, another, yeah, you've got Wesley Burns as well. The triangle of Welsh players there. So I'm supporting Ipswich apparently at the moment as well. Okay, we'll take a glance then at League 1 and 2. Portsmouth are still top, only six points different. Could be down to three if Derby win their game in hand. And then down the bottom are Carlisle with 20 points. Latest results of Tuesdays. Let's do those. Bolton beating Wickham 2-1. Uh, Burton's game against Carlisle called off. Postponed, I'm not sure why. It never says. Charlton, Lincoln won all. Cheltenham, Blackpool 2-0 to Cheltenham. Derby won away 3-0 at Exeter. Mendes Lang with one of the goals. And Reading drawing with Fleetwood won all. Leighton Orin beating Northampton 4-3. Oxford beating Wigan 4-2. Another game called off Port Vale, Peterborough. Portsmouth beating Cambridge 3-1. Goals there from Yengi with the penalty. Piet Harris and Kamara. Not sure how to pronounce it. Oh, what's that about? John Mosinho Hill's goal scoring depth. Is he the manager of Portsmouth? I used to, um, there's a weird story about FIFA here. I think he used to play for Stevenage. And I used to, I played once um, a, a career mode as Stevenage, and he was like amazing, but they were in like League Two at the time. Uh, Shrewsby Partly won all, and Stevenage losing home to Bristol Rovers 3 2. And lastly, League Two Stockport are top. Mm -hmm. Wrexham fourth. Uh, Notts County in 7th, Newport in 14th, Forest, Green and Sutton United down the bottom. Tuesday's roundup, Accrington beating Wimbledon 2-0, Forest Green beating Barrow 2-1, it's good for them in that relegation spot. Bradford beating MK Dons 4-0, Colchester Grimsby called off, Crawley Walsall 1-0, Gillingham Swindon 2-0. Mansfield beating Harrogate 9-2. Hattering from Boateng. Uh, Newport losing on to Notts County 3-1. With Goldrick with one of the goals. And Salford, Doncaster 2 all. Stockport losing on to Crew 3-1. Wrexham winning away at Sutton, bottom of the table. 2-1 with a late goal from Lee. And Tramia losing on to Morecambe, 3-2. Okay, I'm going to skip some of the smaller leagues, but I'm going to do the Women's Super League. Chelsea are top. 34 points, one loss and one draw only. Man City and Wol um, sorry, Arsenal Wolves. Wolves aren't even in this division. Um, make up the top three. Liverpool down in fifth. And Bristol still bottom. Ooh, it's looking tough for them. They're five points from three teams. Okay, recent results then. Saturday, Aston Villa drew with Bristol City 2 all. Man United beat Brighton 2 0. Two goals from Nikita Paris. West Ham beating Arsenal 2 1. Wow. So the men and the women played each other the same week. Very different results. Why didn't you get the um, 
women's manager instead of David Moyes then. Rehan Skinner. She's English as well. Okay. Um, then you've got Man City. 2-0 over Leicester. Hemp and Kelly. Chloe Kelly. Chloe Kelly apparently being um, chased by some of the big teams. I think Paris Saint-Germain is trying to buy her. Liverpool, Tottenham won all. And Chelsea beating Everton 3-0. Big news in the women's game. A Real Madrid player has been bought and gone to, I guess, one of the um, American teams for a world record fee. It's about, I think it works out as about 600,000, 800,000 euros it was. And it's a double celebration because it's not the, the um, largest amount that's ever been paid for a woman, for a woman, <laughs> for a woman, but also it's um, an African player. So she is from Zambia, I believe. I think I've read off the top of my head. Remember off the top of my head. So yeah, a Zambian player is in the women's game the most expensive player in the world. So congrats and good luck. Okay, let's go to Europe then. Serie A. Uh, Inter are moving away from Juve. Game in hand and seven points. So stays to lose. I did say that they would come either first or second at the beginning of the season. I didn't perhaps expect Lautaro Martinez to be having such a sensational season. Juve have dropped off the last couple of weeks. AC Milan have caught up a little bit. Then there's a 10-point cap. And then all these teams here are a win or two, all the way down to about ninth, all wanting that fourth spot. Very exciting in Serie A for that Champions League spot. Very unpredictable. Bologna are in the mix and they haven't had a Champions League spot for goodness how knows how long. The two capital teams, Roma and Lazio, Fiorentina still in the picture, and Napoli down ninth, they are obviously holding the, the, the current champions, the holders of the Scudetto, and they're all the way down in ninth. That's how difficult this league is at the minute. So unpredictable. Really good to watch. Highly recommend. Okay. Salunitana not having a great season. Now even losing to lowly Empoli, who themselves are in 16th. Uh, Salernitana, Bottom, Cagliari and Verona. Sassuolo in danger zone. Very low for them, as are oh, Udinese. So they lost 3-1. Cagliari losing to Lazio 3-1. Roma valiantly went 2-1 up against Inter, but couldn't resist. Um, Turam was having a fantastic game. 4-2 in the end it was. In the pouring rain in the capital on the weekend, Sassuolo drawing with Torino, Pinamonti and Sabata, Fiorentina beating Frosinone 5-1, Bologna beating Lecce 4-0, Monza and Verona 0-0, Genoa 1, Atalanta 4, with um, the Dutch contingency, De Ketelera, oh no, De Ketelera's Belgians, nee. the Dutch speaking, the Ketelera and Cope Mainers, Zappa Costa, formerly of Chelsea, and Touré as well getting in the goals. And then a bit of a shock Udinese beating Juventus in Torino. Gianetti with the only goal. Wow. And Midweek fixture, Bologna beating Fiorentina uh, with my favourite player Orsolini getting the first goal and Odgaard getting the second. And Orsolini had a goal ruled offside as well. Had a good game. Serie B briefly. Parma are top and looking handsome, six points ahead. Cremonese and Como, Venezia, Palermo, some big teams. Brescia, Pisa, uh, Samp down in 15th, oh my goodness, Spezia in 17th, some shocks there, key results, Samp lost to Pisa 2-0, and uh, Cremonese drew with Reggiana 1-0, Parma beating Cittadella 2-1. Okay, big story in the Bundesliga this week because Bayer, Bayer Leverkusen B 
beat by München. I think what's happened in previous years, someone's tried to put up a fight for the championship. They've come to a match where they had to face Bayern Munich, and Bayern Munich have beaten them like 4-0, 5-0. And everyone's thinking, oh, well, it's over then. Including it knocks the, the confidence of the team that we're chasing, and then it's all over. Not this time. Now, I have said for quite a while that I do think this year is going to be different, and it really lent a lot of weight to that. We'll have a look at that result in a second. So, Stuttgart in third, Dortmund in fourth, Leipzig in fifth. Remember, fifth might get a Champions League spot for next year on this new system of the Champions League. Down the bottom, Cologne, Mainz and Darmstadt. So, Friday, Dortmund beat Freiburg 3-0. Two goals from Donny Mahler, and one more for Fühlkrug, having a very good season. Augsburg drew with Leipzig, two all, who probably had one eye on the Champions League match this week. München, Gladbach, Darmstadt, 0-0. Frankfurt with Bochum, one all. Mamush and Broschinski. What the score is in that one? Tietz, Demirovic, Openda and Sesko. Berlin actually won a match. Duchy with the only goal against Wolfsburg. Werder Bremen lost home to Heidelheim. Schmidt with a goal, but Maloney and Beste with the winners. And Leverkusen hammered by München. Stanisic, Grimaldo and Frimpong now. Obviously the second in time. Because it's a successful team with a brilliant manager and players who are playing in a system that really allows them to excel. The gossip columns are rife by all accounts. Everyone is going to leave in the summer. Jonathan Tarr is going to go to Bayern Munich, who are thinking of getting rid of the Dutchman, who they're not even playing in defence. Did he play this game? No, they're playing Dyer instead, who had a Dyer game. Um, where is he? Molotel, Garin, Rochebouting, De Ligt. He's not happy, they asked him... In an interview, he said he's not happy about not playing, obviously, as he would be. So Jonathan Tarr is going to go there, apparently. Um, Alonso is going to be the new manager of Liverpool, so the team's going to be dismantled. So I think it's now or never, really. But Leverkusen always do tend to be top six, I'd say. But um, in terms of actually breaking their duck and winning the trophy... Can they do it? My fingers are crossed. I'd love to see it. No offence to Bayern Munich. But it does, obviously, Serie A is way more exciting to watch with something ridiculous like five different champions in the last five years compared to Bayern Munich who are on an 11-year winning streak. So, fantastic for Leverkusen. Well done. And then Stuttgart beating Mainz 3-1. Mittelsteid levelling an Undav with the goals, and lastly, Hoffenheim, Cologne. Oh, Cologne nearly won, and they needed it so bad, but Kramerich scoring in the 94th minute to break their hearts. Pop into the second Bundesliga, St. Pauli, three points ahead of the top with Holstein Kiel, Hamburger, big club, um, so they would want to get out of that division as quickly as possible. They're in the playoff spot. And how are the other teams doing? Oh gosh, guys are slapping in the relegation zone with Hansa Rostock. Wow. And main results this week. Schalke losing again. Although they're not. They're in 14th now, so it's they're not going to be relegated at the second. Only two points away, though. Um, Hütte Berlin beating Kreuter Furt. Two goals from Kempf. Uh, St. Pauli actually lost this week. With uh, Baris Attic with a goal. Kaiser Schlappen lost to Paderborn. Okay, let's go to Turkey in the Super League. Galatasaray now have swapped with Fenerbahce. They are top in this battle between those two classic Istanbul sides. Trab are third, but Besiktas are catching up. They were dropping off, but they seem to have caught it up again. Gaziantep, Bendik, Spor, Konyaspor, and Istanbul Spor at the bottom. 
it's a bit brutal four teams being relegated um, rather than just three okay main results then um, Friday Kasim Pasa beat Adana Demir Sport 3-1 Fatih Karanguruk 2-0 winners over Pendik Sport Kalatasaray beating Istanbul Başak Şehir 2-0 Yilmaz and Dries Mertens Sivaspor beat Rizespor 1-0 Istanbul Sport lost to home to Gaziantep 3-1 Konya Sport beating Ankara Gucci 1 0. Fenerbahce could only draw, which is why they're in second. Tadic and Dzeko, two names from the Premier League. Augusto with two goals for Alanya Sport. And then Drab beating Hatay Sport 2 0. Goals from uh, Egyptian Trezege and Bardi from mm, North Macedonia. Dennis Bardi. And Kaiser Sport Besiktas 0-0, so Besiktas possibly could have gone third. Samsung Sport beating Antalya Sport 2-0. Let's pop to the Netherlands. Where we can see Eindhoven have a 10-point gap um, over the current holder of the competition, Feyenoord. Ajax in fifth. And Utrecht up to ninth now. Falvik, Wallendam, Vitesse down the bottom. Recent results Falvik beat Nijmegen 2 0. Twente one away from home, Excelsior 3 0. Almeira, Alkmaar 0 0. Heracles, Vitesse 3 2. The Eagles and Zwolle 1 all. Utrecht hammering Fortuna Sittard 4 0. Two goals from Taylor Booth. Herenveen beating Ajax 3-2. Two. two goals for Van Amersfoort. And then PSV hammering Volendam 5-1. Uh, goals from Saibari, Schouten, Teze, Pepe and Babadi. Before Feyenoord beating Rot Sparta Rotterdam 2-0. Goals from Hanko and Geertruyde. Has it started? No, Sweden hasn't started back yet. So let's go to Spain, where Real Madrid have now gone top over um, plucky Girona. Barcelona still having this chaos a season. Atletico Madrid not doing much better. Come on, Athletic Club, you can do it. And Sociedad dropping to 7th now. Real Betis up to 6th. Valencia in 9th. Sevilla in 15th, Celta Vigo in 17th, Cadiz, Granada and Almeria down the bottom. And these were the results Friday, Rebetis beat Cadiz 2-0, Jose El Fornals, Fornals, uh, former West Ham player, right? Deportivo Alaves won all with the Real, Real Sociedad lost at home to Osasuna, Budimir, the Croat having a fantastic season there. Yeah, unfortunately, as I was talking about with Bayern Munich earlier on, what usually happens there, Girona were top and uh, Real Madrid have beaten them quite soundly, unfortunately for them. 4-0, Vinicius 2 from Bellingham, who's now picked up an injury, right? And Rodrigo with the other goal. Let's just see. Real Madrid. Uh, squad... Jude Bellingham, ankle injury, early March return. And then Las Palmas beat Valencia 2-0. Getafe beat Bel Celta Vigo 3-2. Mallorca beating Rayo 2-1. Sevilla winning against Atletico Madrid. Romero with a goal, 1-0. And... Yeah, chaos season. Barcelona could only draw three all with Granada. Lewandowski, two from Yamal, the youngster, but Granada's through Sanchez, Pellistri, and Mikel. Is that Man United's Pellistri on loan? Yeah, it is. 
And lastly, oh, a win would have been good there. Athletic Club, Almeria, nil-nil. Quick check of La Liga 2. Leganes are top, Eibar in second. It's a scrap for the playoff spots, but Espanyol, probably the biggest club amongst them there. Okay. So, biggest results. I think sometimes they're beating Espanyol 2 0. And. Zaragoza. Oh no, that was a while back. Okay. Ligue 1. Let's go to France. Paris Saint Germain. 11 points clear. It's practically done. Nice in second. Monaco in third. Brest now only one point away, but they have dropped a little bit down to fourth. Lille, Lens, Rennes, finally getting some form. Marseille having a tough season. Lyon now completely out of the relegation zone, although still only three points away. Lorient, Metz and Clermont Foot. So uh, Marseille could only draw with Metz one all on the Friday night game with ten men. Samu uh, Gigo getting sent off by VAR. Lons beating Strasbourg 3-1, Paris Saint-Germain beating Lille 3-1. They did give them a bit of a scare, Yazici put them in ahead, but then they scored three. I think the story was that um, Mbappe was on the bench, if I remember correctly. Yeah, no place for him in the starting lineup, and they didn't even bring him on. Obviously, contract issues with him again at the moment seems to be the running theme. Le Havre losing to Rennes, uh, Borigeau with the goal. Clermont could only draw with Brest, so bottom against fairly top. Lorient beating Reims 2-0. Nantes beating Toulouse 2-1. Lyon beating Montpellier away 2-1. Goal from Lacazette and Carqueri. They strengthened in the last window, so uh, Nice losing ground against third place Monaco, 3-2. They lost at home with 10 men, Zakaria with two goals and the Russian Golovin with the third, the winner. And that's from France. Um, Premier League in Russia is still on hiatus. And then Scotland, so, oh, wow, Rangers have caught up. 61 points each. It's on. Hearts in third, Kelly in fourth. St. Mirren Dundee, and then Livingston down the bottom with 13 points. So Celtic beat Hibs away 2-1. Oh, 92nd minute winner. Penalty from Ida. And then Rangers beating Ross County 3-1. Uh, 92nd minute winner. Oh no, actually it was 3-1, so it's okay. Two goals from Dessers and the 92 minute uh, goal by Suta. Aberdeen could only draw with Motherwell with a new manager 3 all. What else? Hearts beating St. Johnston away. Goal from Shankland, 1-0. Okay. They were earlier matches, were they? Did I look? Two, three, one. Oh yeah, they were the most recent. Okay, Belgium. Union saint gilloise are eight points ahead. And Lecht still in seconds. So those two have been that way for quite some time now. Club Bruges and Antwerp have caught up. So Club Bruges and Rent. Now, if I'm right, we're into the latter stages, so Henk, um, the highest they can come is 7th. Kortrijk, Eupa and Molenbeek, Sporting, Sporting Charlois down the bottom. Um, and I think the way it works, if I remember correctly, if it hasn't changed, relegation Europe, yeah. If they come 7th and they earn a playoff spot for the um, Europa Conference League, so the season is far from over, and of course anyone else's can still 
get into seventh. That's good motivation, I think, to when you're in the bottom group. Um, let's see recent results. So Friday, St. Tyre beat Kortrijk 1-0. Stade beat Leuven 1-0. Oh, Vestelo got a, a draw with Union Saint-Gilloise. 96th minute equaliser for Madsen. La Poussin with two goals for them. And Club Bruges beating Opa 4-0. And then on the Sunday, Royal Antwerp beating Molenbeek 4-0. Henk drawing with Mechele one all. Uh, and Lecht beating Sporting Chalois 3 1. Gold from Van Kleinput, Dolbert, and Bathquith. And lastly, Circle Bruges beating Gent 2 1. Wow, good result from then. Two goals from Denki. Kevin Denki from Togo. Even though they were down to 10 men, wow. So I can see from those results we haven't gone into the second stage yet. Maybe it's after 30 games, so five left then, I suppose. Still time for these teams to get into the top. Um, has the Super League on resumed yet? Not yet. Soon though, this Friday is back. So that'll be in next week's video. Liga Portugal is back, isn't it? Yes. Okay, Benfica. This is a, a, quite an exciting season in um, Portugal. So Benfica, Sporting. Sporting have been top for a long time. They have game in hand. So they can go back to the top spot soon. That looks to be against Famali Cow down in 10th. Braga in full. Porto in third. So yes, um, but Porto slipping off the pace of the top two. Um, so it looks like a bit of a two-horse race between current champions um, Benfica and Sporting, who had a bad season by their standards, finishing fourth last season. Okay, let's have a look at them then. So Saturday the 10th, Farense, Famalica won all. Morey, Renze, Beating Chavez 1 0, Bovista beating Estoril 2 1, Rio Ava beating Casabia 1 0, Sporting beating Braga 5 0, crikey. Another goal from Jukeres, the Swede, who, if rumoured, will be playing at a big club next season. Benfica hmm, slipped up there, so they could have gone further ahead. They could only draw with Vitoria de Gamaraj. 10 man Gimaraj 2 all there with a 90th minute equalizer by Cabral. I'm talking about slip ups Porto, 10 man Porto lost away to Aruca 3 2. Goal from Evan Nielsen Conceição, but not enough because Mujica, Gonzalez, and Jason with the goals for the home team. And lastly, Vizela beat Gilles Vicente 1 0. Okay, let's, I'll, I'll do a quicker version through these next ones, then we'll get to Asia, starting with Australia and the Americas. Okay, extra class, uh, ooh, so Wroclaw have dropped from, oh, they've still got the same points though, they've gone to second, Jaglionia, Białostok, are now top, Lech Poznan in third, Legia in fourth, current champions Raków Cinstochowa are in sixth, Wodz still down the bottom. In Greece, Pauk are one point ahead in first place, Panathinaikos are in second, and very only two points away in third, AK Athens, Olympiakos a little off the pace in fourth. Down the bottom are Paz Yanina. In the Czech Republic, ooh, so we've had a race going on for quite a while between Sparta and Slavia Prague, but it seems there's a four point gap now for Sparta. Vitoria Pilsen are some ten points behind, though, in third. And down the bottom are Jessica Budiovic, um, still Budiovic? Budu Budejovice, excuse me. So, 
Slavia could only draw with lean one all. Whereas, where Sparta Prague's lost? Oh no, Slavia. So then Slavia beat them. Sparta Prague's last result last week 3 0 win. In Switzerland, they. Oh, they are back, yep. Yeah. Young boys are seven points ahead of Servette. Zurich dropping off, they were early leaders in this league. Baal not having as catastrophic a season as they were at the beginning. They were bottom, but now they're up to ninth. How did they listen? They recently beat St. Gallen. St. Gallen. St. Gallen. 1 0. Servette losing pace, beat, losing to Yverdon. But young boys drawing with Lugano as well. Is it losing? Drawing. Um, I think Norway hasn't started now, correct? Northern Ireland, are we playing again? Yes, we are. Larn are top by one point over Linfield. And then Clifton Villa are only a couple of points behind them as well. Much the top three are far away from Glen Torren in fourth. And Newry down the bottom with only 14. Oops. I think Ireland, yeah, Ireland have finished. They'll be starting back soon. TNS, as usual, running away with the Welsh League. Ironic, because they're actually lit, situated in England. Connors Key, top 10 points difference between them and Bala in third. And down the bottom, we've got Pont to Breathe. So we're in the group stage now, the two different groups. Similar to how I was explaining it in Belgium. So Pennebont are currently just with Haverford West in that playoff spot. And then Connors Key, pretty obvious. That's almost done and dusted. With the, I can't imagine any change going to happen there. I think that's the more exciting part of the Welsh League at the moment. Romania, um, Stau Bucharest are top. Rapid Bucharest are second, but... Nine points behind Cluj, even further in the third, and Botoshani down, Dinamo Bucharest having a pretty awful season as well. Stauer beating Sepsi most recently 1 0, and Cluj losing home to Rapid, Bucharest 1 0. Croatia, Rijeka are still top. Dinamo Zagreb still haven't caught them. Does that mean they've not played then? No, they have been playing. Dinamo Zagreb could only draw um, with Lokomotiva on Saturday the 10th. The next game is on Sunday coming against Varazdin. Okie dokie. Where are we? Bundesliga Austria. Salzburg are top by two points over Sturm Graz. And down the bottom, Lustenau still with only six points. Um, let's have a look. Key results. Salzburg won all with Sturm Graz in the last time they played Rakov and Kiteshvili on Friday the 9th of February. Salzburg's next game is against Linz away. And Sturm Graz play Rapid Vienne on Sunday. Um, are Israel playing at the minute? Yes, they are, but they haven't played for a little while. I'll go follow them next week. Um, then Hungary. Hungary have had a couple of games. Maybe they had cups this weekend. Oh no, that was this weekend. Um, Pakshi are still top. Frey Faros are only a point away in second. Kishvarda down in 14th. How did Pakshi? Pakshi did... Uh, got a win 1-0 against Ketch Kemeti recently. And Ferenc Faros beat Debrecen 2-1. North Macedonia Struga still top. Skupi and Skendia chasing and down the bottom. Vardar Skopje. So not much change there throughout the whole season, really. Um... 
then we've got Cyprus. Um, Aris Limassol had a really good campaign this year, beating and drawing Rangers. Nicosia, Apoel Nicosia in second by Gold. Oh, actually, it's not even Gold of Rizmus, we head to head. With Lanarca in third, Omonia Nicosia in fifth. And Doha Katokopia down the bottom. Aris Limassol's most recent result um, was. Last weekend they beat Carmiotisa 3 0. Savo Kokorin, the Russian, and Kaju. Azerbaijan, Karabakh are now top. Miles ahead. Wow. Is that 16 points? I don't know, my maths not very good. Kabbalah down the bottom. Karabakh's most recent result being what? Three all with Sabah. Jankovic, Eugenio, and Benzi on the 98th. This looks like an exciting game. Ukraine, are they playing yet? No, they're not playing back yet. But Krivpas are, with Dnipro, very surprising first and second in that league. Shachta and Dinamo down in fourth and fifth. Uh, Kazakhstan has finished. Yeah, completely finished. Bulgaria hasn't started back, but it'll be back soon. Bosnia, same, they will be back soon. Armenia will also be back soon. And last one, Serbia have been playing. We've got Partizan Beograd top, one point behind our Red Star, Chavenas Vesta, and Bachka Topola, nine points behind them in third. Kukarički in fourth, Vojvodina in sixth, and Radnik Surdulica down the bottom. The big two's most recent results. Red Star beating Vozdovac 2-1. And Partizan Beograd winning away against Yavor 1-0. Okay, let's leave Europe and head over to Asia. Starting with Australia. Wellington of New Zealand, curiously enough. Same situation as the um, Welsh League where an English team is top. In the Australian League, a New Zealand team is top in the form of Wellington Phoenix. And then you've got Central Coast in second, but five points behind. MacArthur third, Melbourne fourth, Sydney in sixth, and down the bottom, Western United, with only eight points. Recent results. Um, so, Wellington, 2-0 with, sorry, 2-0 winners against Western United. Pennington and Donaki, own goal from Donaki. Melbourne lost home to MacArthur 1-0, goal from Holman. Brisbane hammered Melbourne City 5-1, highlight being two goals from Waddingham. Central Coast lost home to Sydney FC 3-1. Uh, Grant, Caceres and Hall, Hall with an own goal. And uh, Western Sydney Wanderers and Newcastle Jets 3 all, Despite Western Sydney having two red cards, they still managed to get a 92nd minute equaliser through Marcelo. Okay, Pro League, I think, has been on hold. Yes, because of the Asian Cup. We did have a game, Aliti had beating Artoi. 3-0, Hamdala, Alhamdi and Romarino with the goals, but they'll be back to action soon. Al-Hilal currently running away with it. Ronaldo's Al-Nasser in second. I believe the K-League hasn't started back yet. 
and press it twice for luck. J League hasn't started back yet. The UAE again. Oh no, they had a couple of games, but yeah, they were. So they should have started back, but the Asian Cup was on and their national team was on duty. They had a couple of games though on Tuesday, Al Wahda with Sharjah 1 all, Al Etihad Kalba Khorfakan 1 all, and Al Wasol and Al Nasser 1 0 to Al Wasol. Al Wasol are currently top by 8 points. Um, Al Ain with a game in hand is second currently. And Hatta and Emirates Club down the bottom with just five points each. So the CONCACAF Champions League has been... has changed, hasn't it? Oops, what's it done that? We have had a couple of games. Today we saw Chivas beating Forge of Canada 2-1. Gutierrez and Castillo. Tavernier's 93rd minute goal, not enough. So they are out. But it's not showing me. Are we in a. What format are we in? They could be straight knockouts. Can they? So. I'm not sure of the format. Someone explain in the comments to me and I'll check it out on um, the f official website and get myself together. MLS hasn't started back yet. Liga MX has, and they recently had games, let's have a look. So Monterrey are top. This is the clausura of the 23-24 campaign by the looks of it. So America, oh gosh, three joint, and Tigres, three massive teams there. Cruz Azul just one point behind, Pachuca on 12 points, Chivas on 11, yeah, some only Juarez, Ciudad Juarez down with two points. So only 17 games, so there's only nine games left to play. And America beat Leon 1 0, go from Rodriguez. Is that which Rodriguez is that? From Uruguay, Brian Rodriguez. Cruz Azul beating San Luis 3 0. Monterrey beating Pachuca. 3-2. I love Monterrey Stadium, it's really nice. Tigres beating Santos 3-0 away. Two goals for Brunetta and one for Ibanez. And lastly, uh, Universidad Nacional beating Puebla 3-0. Two goals for Avila. So, Canada hasn't started back yet. Liga Nacional in Honduras has been playing. Maratón are top on goal difference ahead of Motagua. Olimpia and Real España, Real Sociedad and Olancho make up the top six. Vitoria down the bottom with one point. Maratón did actually lose this week to Motagua 2-0. Goals from Mejia and Martínez. And then we've got, that's all for North America. South America has, they play in the um, state championships in um, Brazil. The minutes they're not playing. Liga Profesional hasn't started back yet. Copa de Liga, oh, is the Copa playing? Yes, the Copa de la Liga Profesional is playing now. Let's have a look. So, um, no. River Plate are top and Independiente are second after four and five games. Gimnasia Instituto, Argentinos Juniors, and that's in Group A. Group B, Godoy, Cruz, Newells, Estudiantes in Racing Club. Boca Juniors playing at the minute, they are down in seventh and the second. But it looks like they're winning. 1-0 half-time Merentiel. Okay, so recent results. Racing beating Newell's 4-0. And Tigre losing at home to Devencia 1-0. Independiente beating Rosario Central 1-0. Chivas 
Chile has started back. Colombia has. So Colombia, uh, Junior are top. Millonarios second, Tolima third, and down the bottom are Chico. Recent results, Millonarios beat away Atlético Nacional, both having a player sent off. And that feisty game is that, Atlético Nacional Millonarios. I think that's a derby, isn't it? And uh, Castro with the only goal and the winner, Leandro Castro. Junior actually lost to, lost to Fortaleza. Ceballos and Rodriguez with the goals. And let's try Uruguay. No, they haven't started back yet. Cool, okay. I managed to do them all. Yay, one minute. Sorry, one minute, one hour and ten minutes. It's taken me, but we've done it. At last I've got back to the old way and um, yeah, I hope the audio worked all the way through this video. I'll cry um, if it uh, doesn't. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Do click like, comment, tell me how your club's doing, how your favourite player's doing. And um, yeah, got lots of videos coming up soon. I'm going to do an early prediction for the uh, European Championships in the summer. And I'm going to do a Champions League, a Conference League, Europa League roundup pretty soon as well etc etc so um, if you've got any video ideas you'd like to suggest then also drop me a comment don't forget to check me out on patreon as well if you want to support the channel a little bit more um, or just like the video that'll help too thank you very much and i hope you're nice and relaxed you're all caught up on your world football and you can sleep soundly <laughs>